Are you moving to Portland, Oregon with a family or you plan on starting a family in Portland, Oregon? Well, in this video, we're going to talk about the nine best neighborhoods in Portland proper to raise a family. All that starts now. Hey, what's up everybody? This is Paul Clem with the Home Team Brokers coming to you from Portland, Oregon. And in this video, we're going to talk about the best neighborhoods in Portland, Oregon to raise a family. Now, this is largely going to be taking into account crime and safety and schools, uh, but also other amenities like walkability, sidewalks, walking trails, parks, natural areas, green spaces. A lot of the things that I think a lot of people with kids would be looking for. Now, of course, a lot of people are drawn to the suburbs, and when you think about uh, young families, people raising a family, you know, the suburbs kind of fits that stereotype a little bit. Uh, but. Portland is a great place to raise a family as well. There are some wonderful neighborhoods to raise a family in Portland, Oregon. And of course, a lot of people moving into the area want to live in an area that has a little bit more going on, right? So if you're living in Portland, in the city or in the city limits, you're gonna have much better access to the arts, the culture, the restaurants, the breweries, all of the great things that make Portland so special. So again, in this video, we're going to talk about the top nine places in Portland, Oregon Oregon to raise a family. Now this list is really wide ranging. You have some real urban residential areas that are really close into the city, really close into some more urban feeling areas and close into downtown Portland. And you have some areas that feel a little bit more suburban, you know, and feel much more residential uh, and, and lack a lot of kind of the, the multifamily development and the commercial development that you get when you have more of that urban residential mix. So we're going to go in order from number nine to number one. So stick around to the end to see what the best rated neighborhood in Portland is to raise a family. And if this is your first time to the channel or you've been here already, welcome back. But if you haven't and you wanna get more videos like this, make sure to hit the subscribe button, tap the little bell to get notified every time we drop a new video. And we've helped so many people relocate to Oregon and move to the Portland metro area. As real estate professionals, we love to help with that process. So if that's you, give us a call, send us a text, shoot us an email, or click the link down below in the description of the video and schedule a Zoom call with us. Either way, we would love to help with your move to the Portland area. All right, rank number nine and first on the list that we'll talk about is a neighborhood called Southwest Hills. So this is a pretty large area. When you look at the boundaries of Southwest Hills, you have smaller neighborhoods within Southwest Hills like Portland Heights, for example. In this area, you're going to be around like Council Crest. You're going to be at some elevation up in what are known as the West Hills, AKA the Tualatin Mountains. So. Portland, downtown Portland has, you know, these hills behind the city. So makes for a very, you know, scenic kind of skyline and landscape. But up in those hills, uh, you have a lot of residential development. On the northwest side, there is some residential development. There's also Forest Park, one of the biggest inner city parks in the country. Great for hiking. If you live in Southwest Hills, you'll be able to get to uh, Forest Park relatively easily. Uh, and again, you have Council Crest in Southwest Hills, which is one of the better viewpoints in the city uh, to see downtown Portland. Uh, this area primarily developed over the last uh, 100 years to maybe the last 80 years. So you see a lot of 100 year old homes, 100 plus year old homes up into the 50s and 60s uh, when a lot of the development in this area had taken place. Not a lot of very large lots. So these homes are packed in there pretty good. You have winding streets and hills. Um, so, you know, if it's snowing in Portland, you're going to get some snow up there, even if you don't get it at a lower elevation. But overall a very highly sought after area. I think regarded as a little bit of a nicer area when you look at the size of homes, the style of homes, and how well homes have been kept in this area over the years. So you're looking at a median sale price right now in the Southwest Hills neighborhood of $860,000. And this is an area, again, very highly sought after. I think a lot of people do like the West Hills. There's a lot of different neighborhoods in the West Hills. Southwest Hills has one of the largest footprints in terms of neighborhoods up in the West Hills. All right, next on the list, ranked eighth 
for the best neighborhoods in Portland to raise a family is East Moreland. East Moreland is a neighborhood that you've probably heard us talk about a little bit. Very picturesque, very iconic in terms of the architecture, um, you know, the, the tree-lined streets, as far as an old, very well-established, nice Portland neighborhood. A little bit of a hidden gem because it is a little bit off the beaten path all the way south in Southeast Portland. Uh, so you are just east of Westmoreland, which is this uh, Moreland Selwood area, which is a very hip neighborhood with great restaurants and shops and areas to walk around. But you get into East Moreland and you have these really large stately homes. Again, tree-lined streets with these big mature trees. You're right next to Reed College, which is a beautiful campus. Uh, you know, one of the better liberal arts colleges uh, on the West Coast, maybe in the country. Um, and so this neighborhood definitely has a little bit of a bubble around it when you look at what it's surrounded by. Um, you also have Woodstock just to the east of East Moreland, which is another kind of hip up and coming Portland neighborhood with a main drag with restaurants and shops and things like that. Uh, but Selwood, Moreland, Woodstock, and some of the Southeast Portland neighborhoods to the north of East Moreland are going to be a little younger, a little hipper. You know, you're going to have more apartments and townhomes mixed in. In. You're gonna have like the smaller bungalows and things like that, but East Moreland, again, big beautiful homes, a beautiful neighborhood, very similar to areas like Laurelhurst and Irvington on the east side of Portland. The median sale price right now in East Moreland is $786,000. Uh, so definitely a little bit higher than average, uh, just like probably a lot of these neighborhoods on this list will be, uh, compared to the median sale price of Portland as a whole, which is closer to $500,000, $550,000. All right, next on the list and ranked seventh is Arnold Creek. So this is a neighborhood in Southwest Portland, as far south as you can get in Southwest Portland, sharing a border with Lake Oswego on the south side of Arnold Creek you get into Lake Oswego areas like Mountain Park you can access downtown Lake Oswego pretty easily uh, and so this is an area with quick and easy access to one of the highest regarded suburbs in the Portland metro area in Lake Oswego but Arnold Creek has a really diverse offering as far as the type and styles of homes you have homes that are on quarter acre third acre lots you have developments you know, built in the last 20 30 plus years where homes are kind of packed a little bit a little bit more dense but a lot of sidewalks a lot of walking paths walking trails you have stevenson road lancaster boone's ferry uh, as these main thoroughfares and these are very wooded areas too so big tall mature trees it makes for a really cool dynamic. Um, you are going to get into some areas where uh, you can get some natural light, but it's gonna be shaded quite a bit. So some people like that, some people don't. Uh, but very cool, very private area overall. I think even if it's an area that somebody doesn't necessarily see themselves living in, I think most people appreciate kind of the unique character of this area. Uh, and so again, this is in Southwest Portland, as far south as you can get in, in Southwest Portland. And the median sale price right now in Arnold Creek is $916,000. So that's going to be reflective of the desirability of the area, of course, but also just a lot of larger homes too. So it's not necessarily that the price per square foot in this neighborhood is way higher than others. It's uh, more so the case that this really feels very suburban. It doesn't feel urban at all. I mean, you're really removed from the city in terms of you know being close up into downtown Portland. Access is great. You can get into downtown Portland 12, 15 minutes, no problem. Uh, but again, feels very suburban, so you have big, larger, single-family homes. All right, next on the list is a neighborhood called Sabin. So we have to go into Northeast Portland, and this is a neighborhood that uh, is along what I would call the Fremont Corridor. So Fremont running from MLK, which is also Highway 99, and running east all the way through Beaumont Wilshire and uh, even into like Rose Way and Rose City Park. And so a very sought after area overall when you look at Sabin as well as the neighborhoods that are surrounding it and neighborhoods to the east. Um, it is just north of Irvington. So Irvington, again, another one of those kind of iconic Portland neighborhoods, a lot like in East Moreland or a Laurelhurst. Um, Sabin itself is a little more modest. So in Irvington, just to the south, you have these really big stately homes, these tree-lined streets. Definitely seems to be, you know, one of those neighborhoods that was kind of the original neighborhood 
bit of like a professional class, doctors, lawyers, things like that, you know, when Portland was initially being developed. But again, Sabin just to the north of Irvington, uh, a little more modest as far as the homes that you get. So a little bit smaller homes. These are like the very prototypical Portland craftsman bungalows. And you can get some of the larger, more stately homes as well, but um, a, a very uh, sought after neighborhood. A little bit surprised that this is on the list this high just because of its proximity to MLK and 99 because that is such a busy thoroughfare. Generally, when we look at crime rates in particular, um, neighborhoods, areas that are really close to a major highway, major road, or interstate tend to see a little bit of a higher rate of crime. But again, this is also taking into account schools, um, you know, the overall rate of crime, both property crime and uh, violent crime. Um, and I, I know that a ton of people are really drawn to Sabin. So this is a neighborhood and a community with a lot of pride and an area for sure that does tend to draw a lot of people that are looking for kind of a true Portland neighborhood. The median sale price right now in Sabin is $650,000. So that's going to be probably lowest on this list when we're looking at the top nine uh, most family friendly or best areas to raise a family in Portland, Oregon. Okay, next on the list is a neighborhood called Hillside. So this is in the West Hills in Northwest Portland. So just south of Forest Park and just west set up above Northwest 23rd. So this Northwest Knob Hill district that is super popular. One of the best entertainment districts in Portland, restaurants, bars, shops, boutiques, all that good stuff. Um, so up on the hill, just set up above uh, Northwest 23rd is this neighborhood called Hillside, bordered by Burnside on the south and Cornell on the north. So you have, you know, big iconic Portland homes. Um, this whole neighborhood is more or less facing east. So you get city views, you get Mount Hood views, you can see Mount St. Helens, maybe even Mount Adams, you know, great sunrises. Um, you know, and you're up in this uh, residential area, but just up above the city. So, I mean, you can drop down into, again, Northwest 23rd or anywhere in, into anywhere into downtown Portland or even get on the other side of the river very easily. So if you want to live really in Portland and have close proximity to things that are in the city, but live in a more residential area, an area like Hillside is going to be perfect. Now, um, again, these are larger homes. These are, you know, these are homes that have, you know, some of the most iconic architecture architecture uh, in the city of Portland. So definitely comes at a premium. The median sale price right now uh, in Hillside is 1.4 million. And at least part of that is going to be because these homes are larger, kind of like we talked about in Arnold Creek, but the, the price per square foot is going to be a little bit higher too, because this kind of city residential being up on the hill dynamic definitely, again, comes at a premium but this is a neighborhood that is very sought after. There are similar neighborhoods too, so that's definitely something that we can talk about, but I think one of the more desirable aspects of Hillside and Willamette Heights, which is an area very similar just to the north of it, is your proximity to Northwest 23rd. All right, next on the list is Sylvan Highlands. So this is also up in the West Hills. We have to go back down into Southwest Portland, and this is going to be an area that is connected to and very similar to Southwest Hills. You get a, a little bit more of some newer development, and when I say newer, some development in the last 30 or 40 years, uh, whereas a lot of the Southwest Hills, um, a lot of 50 plus up to 100 year old homes Homes. Um, and another unique attribute of Sylvan Highlands is uh, your very quick and easy access down into Beaverton. So Barnes Road is a main, th main thoroughfare that goes through here. If you go down Barnes, you can hit 217 or Highway 26 and you know follow these corridors through Beaverton or even south down into like Tigard all the way down to I-5. Uh, but again, I mean, like a lot of these neighborhoods up in the West Hills, you are up in the hills, right? So you have some elevation. Uh, you very well may be on a lot that is a little bit sloped. So you might have, you know, 8,000, 10,000, 12,000 square foot lot, but uh, not all of it uh, might be usable. So that's going to apply to a lot of these neighborhoods that are up in the Southwest Hills or Southwest West Hills. Um, and in Northwest in the West Hills too. So uh, there haven't been enough transactions right now to calculate a median sale price. The median list price right now is 1.1 million in this area. Another kind of unique uh, thing about uh, Sylvan Highlands is you're more or less facing uh, West and South. 
Um, so some of these neighborhoods, like Hillside, for example, your, you know, the development, uh, the, the homes are on the east side or the downtown side of the West Hills, and Sylvan Highlands is back on the west side. So go down the hill, again, you're going to get into Beaverton. Now I talked about Highway 26 too as being kind of this main corridor through this area. Uh, Sylvan Highlands is on the north side of Highway 26. Southwest Hills is on the south side of Highway 26. So that's uh, a, a clear dividing line, you know, throughout most of these areas that are by and large very similar as far as the types of homes you can get, the median prices, and just the overall environment that you would be living in. All right, next on the list is Alameda. So Alameda is in Northeast Portland and is also along this Fremont Street corridor. So Sabin is a little bit further west and closer to MLK. Uh, and uh, Highway 99 there, and Alameda is just to the east of Sabin. So Alameda has a little bit more of an upscale feel, larger homes, things like that. Again, Sabin has a lot of smaller bungalows, kind of the very typical Portland bungalows. Alameda has some of the larger, more stately homes that you would find in like an Irvington, which is also in this Fremont corridor, like we mentioned a little bit closer to Grant High School and Grant Park. Grant Park is another neighborhood in and of itself, but kind of a continuation of this whole area. But Grant Park is this big open park uh, that's you know a great place to go for a run, walk your dog, have barbecues, whatever it, may, whatever it may be. And that Grant High School right there is newly renovated, so it's a big, beautiful structure. Um, Alameda, just like Irvington and, and other neighborhoods in this Fremont corridor, uh, you know, tree-lined streets, you know, nice big mature trees, sidewalks, again, just these nice big kind of stately old Portland craftsman style homes. And the median sale price right now in Alameda is $920,000. So again, Sabin just to the west of Alameda and by and large considered to be the same area in Sabin, the median sale price $650,000. So you see a little bit of a step up in terms of price and what you can get in Alameda. All right, next on the list, rank number two best neighborhoods for families in Portland, Oregon is Marshall Park. So we're hopping back over to Southwest Portland. Marshall Park is a neighborhood that is just north of Arnold Creek. So there's this corridor in Southwest Portland on the south side of I-5 and Barber Boulevard, which is kind of the main thoroughfares through Southwest Portland, where you have uh, Arnold Creek all the way to the south and then just above it, Marshall Park. Very similar dynamic, a little bit older in terms of what you can get and when it was developed. So you can get 100 plus year old homes, 75, 80 year old homes, whereas down in Arnold Creek, you do get a little bit more newer development, uh, but very similar dynamic as far as the landscape. Big trees, very wooded area. You have very easy access to Tryon Creek State Park, which is this big state park in Southwest Portland, uh, almost into Lake Oswego, 700 acres, incredible area. Marshall Park, the neighborhood also has Marshall Park, which is a little bit smaller, but similar similar to Tryon Creek. I think Tryon Creek actually runs through Marshall Park there, but Marshall Park itself has uh, walking trails, hiking trails, things like that. There's a playground, so it's a really popular uh, spot to take the kids, to take the dog, go for a walk, go for a jog, whatever it may be. A little bit more modest in Marshall Park in terms of what you can get overall. So again, older homes, homes that are a little bit smaller than what you get in Arnold Creek, similarly just to the south. And this is another area that hasn't had enough transaction volume to calculate a median sale price right now, but the median list price in Marshall Park is $799,000. All right, last, certainly not least, ranked number one for best neighborhoods for families in Portland, Oregon is Northwest Heights. So this is an area really known as Forest Heights. Forest Heights is by and large the development that is in Northwest Heights. Uh, this is in Northwest Portland. This is just south of Skyline Boulevard. Skyline Bo Boulevard runs kind of along the top of the West Hills and continues to go all the way west. Um, so you drop down the hill from Skyline, you get into Forest Heights. Uh, beautiful development, a much newer development by and large than other areas that we've talked about on this list. So this is an area that's really been developed over the last you know, 20, 30 years. Big, beautiful homes, by and large considered to be luxury real estate in this area. 
Um, definitely an area that is highly sought after. Um, again, you have quick, easy access into Portland uh, through Skyline Boulevard, uh, but you're on the west side of the West Hills. So you're kind of on that backside Beaverton side. So you can drop down into Beaverton, into Cedar Hills, um, a lot of very nice, more suburban areas and really feels purely like a suburban area. So, you know, this is an, an area that has, you know, any commercial development or, you know, kind of that residential urban mix. This is an area, again, you're up in the hills, big, beautiful luxury homes and a very sought after area overall. I think, you know, when you look at this list, when I look at this list, you know, there's not a lot of surprises. Again, a lot of diversity for sure. And this area, Northwest Heights being ranked number one is definitely no surprise. So the median sale price right now in Northwest Heights is $1.1 million. So again, a little bit higher uh, than some of these areas. Not the highest though, uh, not the highest in terms of median sale price. Uh, compared to some of the other neighborhoods that we've talked about, uh, but definitely a very family-oriented area. Again, big, huge, single-family homes uh, in Northwest Heights. And again, no surprise, it's ranked number one on this list. All right, so if you are moving to the Portland metro area with a family or you plan on starting a family here and you wanna talk more about maybe the neighborhoods we've talked about on this list or other areas, other neighborhoods in Portland uh, that check a lot of these boxes, give us a call, send us a text, shoot us an email, or click the link down below in the description of the video, schedule a Zoom call with us, and on that call we can talk about your budget and your timeline, and we can talk about neighborhoods that are going to suit you best. Uh, now, if this video is helpful, make sure to hit the like button, that helps us out a lot. If you wanna get more videos like this, make sure to subscribe to the channel and tap the little bell to get notified every time we drop a new video. As always, we really appreciate you watching, and until next time, we'll talk to you later.